Hey, welcome to another Bible study presented to you by God's Government Cooperated. I am your host, GK. Yo, so this Bible study right here is based on a true life experience that just happened maybe five, six days ago. I got a Christian neighbor, right? Um, dedicated, dedicated to God. Um, and she told me to look at her pastor. So I checked out her pastor on YT, and he got a couple videos up and everything. You know how churches these days, they record all of their uh, Sunday and Wednesday services and stuff. And some of the stuff he said, I wasn't agreeing with it. And I had a small spiritual debate with her about it. Um, her pastor was talking about people not exhibiting faith. Um enough faith before shit hits the fan if I may use those words um, and he used the example of somebody that just was diagnosed with cancer and he was saying why why are you coming to God now don't why'd you wait until now to come to the OG why didn't you come to God when everything was good and you didn't have cancer and she shares her past the sentiment of people only coming to God when it's convenient for them or when some major stuff happens or whatever. Could be because I asked her, how do you feel about that right there? And she co-signed past it. And I'm like, no, you can't serve God with that line of thinking. You have to carve it out of your mind some type of way. I, I thought like that too about a decade ago. Um, I was on some gangster Christian type shit or something like that. You don't say nothing about God. Well, I'm going to come for you. Word up. I had to realize that's not how Jesus operates. That's not how he operates. He doesn't point his fingers at people like us humans that serve him do. So this Bible study is to let all of those Christians or believers or whatever you call yourself that do stuff like that I want you to know that the OG doesn't want you to behave like that, representing his name. And I'm going to take you to scripture to confirm that. Um, in this story, uh, true life story, I'm telling you. Um, I mean, this church isn't that big, but if it was and this past is exhibiting this type of spiritual behavior, it would be misleading to millions if he had millions of people in his church because everyone would co-sign him like my neighbor. And you, if you're a spiritual leader, you definitely have to know what it is that Jesus wants you to preach about and speak about because he placed you in a position of leadership and he doesn't want you misguiding the sheep. I told my neighbor I should be a pastor. All of the stuff that the OG that God has revealed to me, I don't know why I'm not out preaching to some people. But maybe this is the start of it. Let me take you all to Matthew chapter 7 verse 1. Um, it says, uh, judge not that ye not be judged or judge not that ye be not judged. Meaning... God is basically telling you, and let me, the amplified, ver that was the KJV version. Uh, the amplified version breaks it down a little bit more. Um, do not judge and criticize and condemn others unfairly with an attitude of self-righteous superiority as though assuming the office of a judge so that you will not be judged unfairly. That's the uh, amplified version. Um, breaking it down a little bit more. Um, Basically, we're all human beings. I don't consider myself human, even though I'm in this human flesh. I am a son of God, meaning I am God. A God. Um, That's in Psalms. He are God's uh, Psalms. I can't remember the exact verse. I'll get that for you all at a later date, though. Uh, don't walk around smug and, oh, I'm a Christian. I'm going to heaven. You're nothing. Jesus Christ wasn't down here doing that when he was in the flesh. He was humble. He wants us to copy him. He wasn't down here. 
what the fuck? I'm the son of God. I don't got to prove shit. He didn't have that type of attitude. He didn't carry that type of tone in his voice. He was humble and patient. Except for the few times, like the time he turned over the tables. That really pissed him off right there. But God wants us to copy him. Who are we anyway to think we're better than anybody? I don't give a damn how much money you have. You're still not better than anyone else. God created all of us and we're equal. Equal sign. We're all equal to him. God. Down here, different story. Oh, you're worth a hundred million? Hmm. You're worth a billion. Da, 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 this, da, da, da. You got this, you own that. You're wearing this, you're wearing that. Who? To the person that it really matters, the OG, or the original God, the one God, the only God, Jesus Christ, God the Father. It doesn't matter. Who cares? So you don't have any position to judge any other human on this planet right now. No position. Not even God himself when he came down here in the flesh did that. He wasn't walking around like he was better than anybody else. He just came from heaven. He he could have had the, 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 the air of, you puny ass humans. What the hell are you? Throwing rocks at me for it. Do you know what I will do to you? He was humble. I only got enough, one more verse, uh, which is in the book of John, Matt, uh, John 9, 49, 50. And the disciples ask, uh, Master, talking to Jesus. Master, said John, we saw someone driving out demons in your name and we tried to stop him because he is not one of us. Jesus replied, do not stop him, for whoever is not against you is for you. And I'll, com I'll um, connect that to my neighbors uh, and her pastors, um, their line of thinking. Um, they were like, "Who? Are, why are you just now coming to God now that you got AIDS or what are this and that? Why didn't you come to him before? But now that you got AIDS, you want to come to God? Don't think like that. Please stop thinking like that and please stop telling people if you are doing that, please stop doing that because Jesus Christ does not want you to say stuff like that to people, especially if they're not saved. That would turn, totally turn them off like, oh, these people think they're better than I got AIDS. I'm trying to I need moral and spiritual and emotional support. And you're coming to me questioning me about why I'm coming. To, you should be thanking me that I am coming to God. And no one can come to God unless he draws them into him. Christ has to draw you and make you desire. So if he doesn't do that, you're not going to have a desire to come to him anyway. So those that are, are being drawn by Christ. I forgot which scripture that was, but I should have all these scriptures in my head. I do have some, but not all. So that book, that passage right there, John, we just read. Jesus was telling the disciples and all of the Christians and believers, okay, you see some people over there repping, I would, repping my name. They're not with us. They're not in my church. I don't know who those people are, but they're representing Christ. So that means we're all in the same game, God's game. We're all in the kingdom of heaven. So don't judge other people just because they're not a part of your group if they're supporting Jesus Christ because they are a part of your group. If you're we're all in the kingdom of heaven. So if you have a pastor that's doing what my neighbor's pastor is doing, please check G check him. The G stands for God, not gangster. And tell him, Pastor, please. I think you're on the no, I know you're on the wrong path with that line of thinking and what you just said. I think you need to do some some praying and, and Ask the Holy Spirit to correct you on that matter. You know what I'm saying? But this this was a quick little Bible study you on believers that may act or say stuff that puts the put puts them in a position or has someone thinking that they're better than someone else. No one is better than anybody. We're all equal. We're all the same. Thus saith the Lord. Stay tuned for the next Bible study. God's government 2021.